Hey, what's up? This is Hans with Request for Music, and uh, this is a new video, and it's one that I wanted to show the um, the state of what my DX7 conversion program is in. And here it is, and um, the conversion process itself, it's not done um, yet. Uh, I'm still working on lots of stuff, so it's taking a while. It's taking longer. Work seems to be getting in the way, so... Uh, but anyway, if I do something like read DX7 files, and I already have a map of, of files that I have here, I just take any uh, system exclusive file out of there. And if I do, then I've got a list of all of the files that are in there. So um, I'll just take whatever, something like Trumpet, for instance. And as you can see, it's um, it reads all of the values for the um, envelope generator and stuff like that. And in the end, and it looks at the uh, algorithm that it's using from the DX7. And in the end, I can just write my file, write the DX7 file. And it actually has completed now. You saw the, uh, the link. And let's see where I can find the files because... Um, I guess it's in here somewhere, yeah. There it is, DC, which stands for DX7 conversion. Random DX7 conversion, trumpet, Synex file. And that's a file that can be just loaded into the Synclavier, so just to see if it works indeed. Let's see, where was it again? DX7, and it was in the patches. And there it is, and it has imported it successfully. So, in the end, it'll just show up into my, um, into the DX7 conversion type, and um, here it is, DX7 conversion trumpet. And apparently this was one with a very low uh, attack. And as I said, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in the conversion because sometimes um, some stuff s seems not to be translated too well. But anyway, um, to do that kind of stuff, I'm actually working on other uh, things from, uh, from my conversion program. I'm actually, um, first of all, looking at the random sound stuff that I'm working on. And that has improved quite a lot since the last time that I've showed it in a video. Um, what I've done is I split everything up, carrier envelope and the modulator envelope and the partial information like volume, pan, tuning, transpose, octave and stuff like that. Modulator inf information affects vibrato, portamento and waves as well. <coughs> because I can, only, uh, I can also choose the wave for the carrier and the modulator. So I can ch um, choose up to seven waves now, but that will grow. Um, because I, I do that mathematically and I'll just add to the list. Uh, so, for instance, uh, what I can do is I can just uh, choose one of the presets that I've put in here, so something like a simple sign, and if it does, then you get all the lines uh, put at the point that would make this a normal sine wave. <coughs> and I've got a lot of, uh, or a couple of presets, something like a synthesizer bass, so this is sort of the, the standard uh, form that I could get a bass from, or a, a brass kind of thing, or a, a pad, or uh, a synthesizer lead sound, or some kind of a synthesizer piano sound, some synthesizer effects, or the random basics, like it was the basics there for that then. Apart from that, I've got a random range that you can set here. So um, that means that if I s take something like a synth pad, normally if I would export the sound now, I get the basic sound that I see as being a synthesizer pad. So if I do that, export this, and you can see in my folder that it has been put in here. So it's DC for disk conversion and synthesizer pad and the date and time in there. So I can import that file, Synclavier import, choose the sound that is made. And if I go into my folder here, or into my find uh, stuff, uh, let's see, where is it? It has made a new type for that DXC random S pad. And here it is. Wow. 
So without conversion, so without randomization, this is sort of the basic synthesizer pad sound that I wanted to work from. If, on the other hand, I wanted to be more random and stuff like that, I could just incorporate uh, a level or percentage of randomize. So I could dial this up, press the recalculate button, and you see a range of stuff that it's going to recalculate. Um, now, of course, it also calculates stuff like the delay attack and everything, and the volume and the pan and all kinds of other stuff. And it might be handy to switch specific stuff off. So there's that's where the small crosses here are are for. So if I um, click out the delay parts and um, thing like the uh, the ratio, which I don't want to change. And maybe also the chorus depth, the chorus fine, maybe maybe good. And the effects, that's okay as it is. And I don't want the uh, vibrato depth and stuff like that. So now it's going to change all of the other stuff um, without that. So if I recalculate, you see that there are a couple of lines that'll be straight. Yeah, they're not going to change. If on the other hand, I do want to have more level on some stuff, I can just dial this in myself, as you can see. So. I I can just drag the area that I want to uh, to recalculate. So something like that. So if I do it now with this SIM pad and I want to change actually the sound of the modulator of the wave, the basic wave of the modulator as well. So I want to change that to, for instance, a saw wave. <coughs> and I want to change this to a triangle wave. So a triangle for the carrier and a saw wave for the modulator. And I want more partials. I want four partials something like that and i can still change for instance the the range for the the pan and i can change the range of the tuning a bit like this and now export this sound it has already uh, exported as you can see here so the top one is the one is the newest one with the newest date and time so i go back into this go into my import and let's see this is the latest one Microphone was dropping down, so I still have to uh, to choose the sound, of course. So this was the latest. Let's see. I think the dial has or the tuning has gone off a bit. Anyway, you can see from my mixer that I've got four um, four mix uh, four parcels on now, and indeed the uh, the tuning has gone all a bit too. A different and a bit weird point but anyway of course it is random so it doesn't take that into account I'll change that back a little and now this is the sound so that's what it's done now this is the time slices that I've made uh, so I got a triangle for the first, got a sawtooth for the rest, and got that for for all of those partials at the moment. So I can choose whichever is going to work for that. Um, so that's actually what the um, what this does. And um, again, you can choose up to all of the twelve partials that will be recalculated for that. Uh, I am working on some new stuff as well on a sequencer part, which will be able to uh, to choose extra uh, steps for as a sequencer part. So if I have something like this and I, I can change delay times and stuff like that, and also saw waves and all that kind of stuff for each of those partials. So I can add a step in here. And now for this step, I can tell it how long it's going to be delayed from the previous step um, so it's a bit different than creating a normal sequence within a normal sequencing programming like like um, logic or Cubase traction or whatever because it's calculated um, in in how do I say that in reference to the the step in front of that um, but anyway that will be the same as um, as the way that I normally make my sequences using uh, Synclavier. Um, 
So you have the option of changing delay times, the, the actual fade time, transpose, volume, modulation, and all kind of st stuff for each and every step. And again, I can change the steps for all of the uh, modulator and, and um, carrier parts of one single step. So if I change to another track, another track here is another partial. You see that I've got 12 partials there and I've got all those steps. So if I make a step here as well and I can actually uh, just select steps and you can see that it keeps track of what waveform was selected for that. Yeah, so that is still a bit of future, but it's going to, to be in there and that's why it takes longer as well, the program. I see lots of stuff that can be more useful in creating stuff for it. So um, that will come here in the end. Uh, let's go back to, um, to the random sound again. Let's take something like a synthesizer piano for uh, as a basis and recalculate first, um, maybe change the percentage a bit recalculate, do something like, mm, what shall we do? Well, choose a triangle for the, uh, for the carrier, or uh, for the modulator, and choose a saw for the carrier. For once, let's take more partials, something like this, and just let's see what, what is getting in there. So just to show you, here is going to be added. Oops, there it went. The top one is the newest one. So let's go into Synclavier, import, and here, let's put it in date. This is the newest one. It says piano, and also in the um, thing here, I've got a new type which has come up. And um, yeah, so I can just choose the sound here. And <laughs> Obviously, because I've changed the sort of sound that it uses as a basis, in this case, a saw wave and uh, um, sort of a triangle wave, it sounds different than an obvious uh, normal synthesizer piano. But still, it's uh, <laughs> pretty useful. It uh, can be used for quite lots, uh, lots of sounds. So, well, I hope that gives you an idea of what is possible or what will be possible with the DXC program. And um, as soon as I have something new again, I'll get back to, uh, to you with that. So for now, cheers, and I'll see you back. Bye-bye.